fishing in New England, it's pretty special. From lazy Vermont trout streams to surf pounded Cape Cod beaches, marshline Connecticut tidal creeks to deep water Maine lakes, inshore, offshore, freshwater and salt, few places compete. This is incredible action. And the species, stripers, tuna, fluke, salmon, trout, pike, even mahi and marlin. New England's got them all. I'm Tom Richardson. Join me as we explore New England's great fishing destinations, chase its many species, and forge new fishing adventures on New England Fishing. New England Fishing is brought to you by the GMC Sierra Denali. This is Precision. This is GMC. We are professional grade. Also brought to you by Garmin. We'll take you there. Pursuit Boats. Explore life in a pursuit. Your New England Yamaha outboard dealer. Reliability starts here. Bosun's Marine. We share your passion. And the Goose Hummock. Serving the New England outdoorsmen since 1946. A beautiful late May morning found me pulling into the Sandwich Boat Basin at the east end of the Cape Cod Canal, eager to start the season with one of New England's founding fish, the humble haddock. My hosts were charter skipper Tyler McAllister and his mate, Blaze Sight, who run the 38-foot Holland Cynthia C2. Hey, Skipper, how you doing? Good. Hey, Ty. Perfect day. Oh, beautiful. Look, I even brought my haddock boots. Yeah, we're going to need them today. <laughs> I mean, it's getting hot out there. Excellent. Lay sight, Tom Richardson. Hey, how you doing, Blake? Nice to meet you. Nice, to, today? nice oh. to be here. Take my haddock boots. Yeah. All right. And there you take that and my camera. And we're uh, on the Cynthia C. Let's go. While McAllister's true passion is chasing bluefin tuna, the red-hot haddock bite on Stellwagen Bank had him eager to catch some fish for family and friends. And naturally, I was happy to lend a hand. So, so Ty, where are we heading today? Well, we're gonna try the southwest corner of Stellwagen. We got a hot report yesterday that fishing was very good. And I also got a report from a couple days before that, uh, another location a little bit east. We're going to go do a little scouting mission, find the bait, and we should be able to find the fish no problem. Yeah, now the haddock fishing's been great this year, right? It's been unbelievable. Best year I've heard in a long time. Uh -huh. uh, it's been uh, all the way from Southern Jefferies all the way down to the southwest corner, the whole you know, bank system there. Well, I haven't done a lot of haddock fishing, I have to confess, so you're going to have to, you know, kind of walk me through this whole thing. Some 19 miles long by 6 miles wide, Stellwagen Bank rises from surrounding depths of 300 to 600 feet to an average depth of 100 to 120 feet. The underwater plateau serves as an oasis of light, its steep edges producing upwellings of nutrients that spark plankton blooms in the upper water column. The plankton provide a rich food source for herring, sand eels, menhaden, sori, and shrimp, which in turn feed larger predators such as whales, tuna, sharks, bluefish, stripers, and of course, groundfish such as cod, pollock, hake, flounder, and haddock. It's a truly awesome fishing spot. Well, we're here at our destination. We're on the southwest corner of Stellwagen, right? It took That's us about right. an hour and 20 minutes to get uh, here from Sandwich. Out of Sandwich, yeah, about that. Uh huh. Yep. What's the so what, what's the water depth? What, what are we fishing right we're here? We're about 80 feet of water right now, mm -hmm. and uh, we're just a little north of the southwest corner, a little northeast of the southwest. So we're corner. actually on the bank we're itself. We're on the bank. We're up mm -hmm. on the high ground of the bank. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely. And so the haddock just tend to. Why are they here? I mean, 
food. Yeah. I mean, why food? I think it's uh, all about the food. As you look around, you can see the birds, you can see the mackerel, and the machine showing a lot of sand eels. So yeah, my God, we've seen a ton of mackerel yeah, already, you know? Uh, I think they're here for the food like everything else. Yeah, right. So. But down on the bottom, they could be eating sand eels, yeah. you know, a little crabs, herring, crabs. They could be eating worms. I anything. Mean, they, uh, a lot of benthic invertebrates down there. Mm -hmm. so, all the right, well, you know, let's not waste any time. Let's go see if there's some haddock below us. There must be a lot of boats around. <laughs> that's us. right. That's right. Let's get busy. All right, thanks. Well, uh, you dressed, uh, dropped it down, Ty, and about two seconds later, you hooked up, right? I don't even think it was two seconds. <laughs> I don't even think it was two seconds. Yeah, wow. They, the, the bottom must be just, like, littered with them, huh? Yeah. The, uh, what, what's the legal limit? 17. Yeah, 17. He's, he's legal, but he's still... Wait, did yeah. you just use your hand yeah, as a well, measurement? Yes, because my yeah. hand's 9 inches. No, no kidding. Well, I wonder how much like, mine is. But that's a probably... little tool for... for yeah? Uh, you know, just measure the distance between your and your thumb and the end of your pinky. Then you can... But what, I don't, what if I don't have you on board all the time? To keep throwing back, okay, we'll, get we'll get bigger, right? Ah, pretty fish. No, oh, I said I wouldn't say pretty fish. Pursuit built to a higher standard. Many try to replicate. Pursuit continues to innovate with cutting edge features and top notch technology. Offshore, center console, dual console, sport coupe, and the sport tender. We have boats from 23 to 38 feet, and once you own one, you will feel the difference. We know you have a choice, and you can put your trust in us to deliver a vessel that will take you where you want to go. Visit your factory authorized dealer today and experience the passion we have built into each and every one of our boats. Visit PursuitBoats.com and explore, experience, enjoy your life in pursuit. When you're moving a big offshore boat, it's all about thrust and trust. For thrust, nothing compares to the Yamaha purpose-built 5.3-liter V8 Power Pioneer. And for trust, Yamaha's new F350C model becomes the only outboard in its horsepower class to feature a five-year limited warranty. Never settle for less than complete confidence and control in the open water. That's Yamaha V8 Power. Get the best and forget the rest. Looks like another short. Well, I don't know. Yeah, huh? That's hey, it's getting closer, right? Yeah. Want to measure them? We got Yeah, get, bring your hand over here so we can measure them. Yeah, we got the other measure right up against the So he's legal. Oh, look at that. But just barely, though. Do you want to keep throwing back? Okay, we'll, get we'll get bigger, right? All right, this feels a little bit better. I hope I didn't snag this one. Nope. No, oh, nice one. There's a nice one. Finally. Come here, buddy. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Okay, I'm on the board with a good one. Look at that. Decent. So Ty, tell us about the uh, the bottom fishing rigs we're using here for ma for haddock. Well, we're using something that's pretty pretty basic. We're using a, a weighted jig, five to nine ounces. 
So the jig can be like one of these, the one yeah. of these yeah. big old eagle claw jigs. It could be crippled herring. herring. It could be a diamond jig. Be a diamond. You just need to get to the bottom, and you got to tend to the bottom fairly perpendicular to the bottom. So you you can adjust it with the tide. You're sure. ready to drift. And the more wind, the more tide. You get to use a bigger jig. Mm -hmm. The um, and then above that we have a single grub. It's just a rubber grub with a six to nine odd hook, right? Uh, circle hook, so you can try to catch them in the. Uh, any spe the I mean, any spe special brand? Nope, it doesn't really nope, matter. Just uh, something that they're gonna, the fish are gonna like. It's soft rubber. They really seem to like that. Now, now, does the color make a difference? You know, last week it was red. The week before that, it was white. I, I have no idea so, why. So sometimes you've got to be light conditions. It could be what they're feeding on in the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be so you keep so bring a bunch of yeah, different ones different and, and try different ones or have everyone on the boat start off with a different color. Sure. And then you can figure out which one works, right? The uh, you know the sort of the best color to start with is red or uh -huh. white. The red white combo is working good today. We're yep. getting on that pretty good. Okay. Um, So pretty, pretty basic. So what do yeah. you got for what do we have for oh, yeah, uh, we have main the line? Trophy series. Oh, the main line yeah. is this is 45 pound test braid. Okay. Um, here we have a little more current. Plus we have a full moon, so mm -hmm. we're going to be moving a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. So the braid helps get us down to the bottom quicker, especially in the deeper water. Yeah. Um, you can go mono, but the mono is a little bit thicker, so you have to use a lighter diameter mono, 25 or 20 pounds. Yeah, sure. You probably don't want to go much lighter than that because you know you, you can hit a fish pretty hard mm -hmm. and start really wearing on the line. Mm -hmm. um, and the rods? The rods. Well, these are the Tsunami Trophy Series boat rod, uh, casting rod. They in seven foot, and they're a great little rod. You can you can really work the even the, the five ounce to the nine ounce jig. Yeah, they're very light. You yeah, know, very light, very manageable. Um, and you got the Shimano. Got the Shimano TLDs mm -hmm. on there. We got a twenty on this one. We got a thirty on that one. Just because my twenty uh, yeah. drag finally quit after about thirty years of using the reel. <laughs> uh, we also set up another. Um, this one. Just, Little once we get into them, we get some lighter action going. It's a Sapphire Pro. It's also from Tsunami, and it's uh, fitted with a, a Daiwa, a small Daiwa. Right. So that, that yeah, on that light gear, yeah. a, a, a haddock is a lot of fun, yeah, right? Yeah, a lot of fun. You mm -hmm. know, and we're gonna be using this this weekend. We're going sea bass fishing tomorrow. So open day sea bass. So good all around. We're gonna try this out once we get rolling in the haddock, pretty mm -hmm. thick. And you can use spinning rod, spinning gear too, like the one next yeah. to you there, as long right? As you can tend bottom. It's yeah. Anything that can tend bottom. Mm -hmm. You know, you know you're in trouble when you 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 have a 45 degree angle line coming off the boat mm -hmm. you just you're not fishing the jig right you want it you'll get you a want lot it. of misses you'll realize you'll you want it a lot of misses. you want it as straight up and down below the yes. boat as possible Best right as you can yep. yeah We came here for. Yep. Uh huh. That's so. beautiful. So they're all mixed in, all different sizes. You know, all down there together, huh? Yeah. Well, we released what half a dozen shorts already. Yeah. yeah. We got a couple small keepers, but. Given today's numerous size and catch restrictions, or if you simply don't want to keep the fish you catch, it's important to know how to release them properly. Here are a few tips. Get the fish to the boat as quickly as possible, as an exhausted fish is less likely to recover from the stress of a prolonged fight and may have a hard time escaping predators after release. This is even more important when fishing in warm water. Keep the fish in water as much as possible while removing the hook. Try to avoid handling the fish, which can remove its protective coating and cause further stress. Take time to revive an exhausted fish and make sure it can swim away strongly. Have the proper tools on board for removing hooks lodged deep in a fish's throat or gills. So keep these tips in mind the next time you need to release an undersized or unwanted fish and you'll be doing your part to protect the resource.
The Goose Hummock offers a full range of marine service and repair. Come visit our Orleans Cape Cod Marine Center. We offer fall service and winterizing, winter boat wrap and storage, winter work projects. Let us give you a quote. We are also a Suzuki authorized partner. The Goose Hummock offers spring commissioning, moorings, slips, and fuel at our dock. We are also the largest tackle store on the Cape and can outfit you fully from bass to canyons. We are also a licensed yacht broker. Visit us online at goose.com. took the jig that time. Yeah. yeah that one's small. First codfish. First codfish. Look at that. Yeah. There you go. Check that out. This guy's going back. Codfish are commonly caught alongside haddock during the spring fishery, but must be released if caught in federal waters due to strict regulations. While the Gulf of Maine cod stock remains in rough shape, the haddock fishery has been a bright spot in New England's flagging groundfish fisheries, with recent stock assessments showing a growing population of mature fish. And based on our small sample, there seemed to be no shortage of small haddock on Stellwagen. doesn't get more basic or simple than this, huh? Yeah, no, <laughs> bounce it off the bottom and have at it. Well, here we are in my kitchen, and I'm with uh, Art D'Alessandro, and he is the uh, chef extraordinaire, and um, we're going to cook the catch. We're going to cook the catch, and it's Haddock from Stellwagen Bank. It looks fantastic. Before heading off on your next big trailering adventure, be sure to inspect your trailer tires. First of all, check the pressure of each tire to make sure they're properly inflated. At the beginning of the season, or if you're heading off on a particularly long trip, make sure you hit the bearings with some fresh grease. Also, take some time to check the lugs on your wheels. Make sure they're good and tight. Check the trailer treads and the sidewalls for cracking or other signs of damage. Oh, and one more thing. You might want to consider purchasing a handy portable compressor. Could get you out of trouble when you're on the road. So there you have it, just a few key tire inspection points to consider so you'll be ready to roll. A memory you'll never release. I don't know. 
Show us your first catch. Learn more at TakeMeFishing.org. He's beautiful. With a full limit of fish for everyone on board, we racked the rods as McAllister turned the Cynthia C2 toward Sandwich. What a day, and what a perfect way to kick off the New England fishing season. Ty? That was a good day. I'd say so. Yeah. yeah. The weather was perfect. You know, fishing had it, was great. Haddock cooperated along with cod. And yeah. Pile of haddock, so. Yeah, that was great. Well, you put us on the on the fish. You know, it's it, but it's great to see that many haddocks around oh, yeah. right now. We released what three times, four times the number oh, we yeah. kept. Yeah, and the cod and the cod too. Oh, yeah, definitely. definitely. So that's a good sign, right? Yeah, and, and all the life we saw. I mean, I know you're you're salivating over the amount of bait that we saw yeah, out there, right? Tremendous, just tremendous. <laughs> when the when the tuna come in and find that, it's going to be all over it, and hopefully they'll stick around all summer again, like last year. Yeah, excellent. Well, the, you know what? A, it's just been a fantastic time. Like I said, I, when I when we started this trip, I haven't done a lot of haddock fishing. Uh, I think I I earned my keep. Did I, did I do okay? Yeah, we did. <laughs> we're on them. We're excellent. on them. Excellent. Well, hey, we'll uh, make. I guess next time we'll meet up, we'll do tuna, right? Oh, that sounds good to me. Awesome. All right, fantastic. Well, that does it for another action-packed episode of New England Fishing. Now, here's Parker Kelly, who's in the kitchen with Chef Art, and they're going to show you how to cook a fresh haddock meal. Well, here we are in my kitchen, and I'm with uh, Art D'Alessandro, and he is the uh, chef extraordinaire, and um, we're going to cook the catch. We are going to cook the catch, and it's Haddock from Stellwagen Bank. It looks fantastic. Yeah. So tell me what we're going to do. Okay, we're just going to make a simple um, baked Haddock Parmesan um, with a Parmesan crust. Okay. Okay, so we're going to uh, take a little, these ingredients here, a little mayonnaise. Okay. A bit of butter, unsalted butter. Uh -huh. We're gonna need you, Parker, to grate some uh, Parmesan cheese. Okay. Okay. With the microplane. Yep. All right. And put it right in the bowl. Put it right in the bowl. All right. That's good. That's good. Yeah, that's, that's great. Easy. Perfect. Look at that. That's already looking good. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So we got a little bit of scallion. Mm-hmm. A little bit of parsley. And then a little Worcestershire. Now is this one of your inventions or is this something you've adapted over the years? Or No, I just kind of put it together. Mm -hmm. uh, if I can open a little Frank's Red Hot. Good, you can stir that up and we'll add the panko crumbs. Now I love panko. I love how you know thick and crunchy they are. Some people use crackers too. Yeah, Ritz crackers yeah. great in there yeah. when you do a simple broiled one. Good. All right, so now we got a nice little little crust there. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, you can put the tomato concasse, a little Roma tomato in there. Concasse. Give it a little little color. Concasse. Yeah. Concasse. And. Uh, that. And a little paprika. For color, for yeah, flavor. for color. And the tomatoes make it. Uh, that's the healthy part. That's it. Right there. Where now it's you just you don't want it too wet, you know. Okay. So how's it how's it feel? It feels perfect, not too wet. Okay. Good. Yes, perfect. And colorful. All right, mm -hmm. that looks good. Okay. Now we're gonna, we're gonna bake this, so we're gonna need a little bit of butter. Yeah. I like butter. Yeah. Who doesn't? All right. Mm hmm. Uh, a little bit of uh, white wine. Okay. And now, a, is that a, true? You have to have a wine that you would drink yourself. You don't have like a cheap wine. I absolutely agree with that. Yeah. I've heard that's true. So a little white wine. We have the butter and a little chicken stock. So here's that beautiful haddock. Look at that. Okay. It's a nice big fat piece. 
and then all we want to do is just pack the uh, crust on the uh, on the fish. Okay, so right on top of it. Right on top, mm -hmm. and then we're going to broil it off at the end, and then uh, we're going to bake this for about 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So that's there we go. Put it in. Put it in the oven. I'll let you do the honors. Okay, how about if I open it for okay. you? Okay. We do it together. All right. Pretty simple. All right, four. Four. Four cheer. Cheer. Okay. Right. Wow. Yum. It's like you know what you're doing. Sometimes. Alrighty. <laughs> Alrighty, it's awesome. That's okay. cooking your catch. All right. Come on. Well, thanks, Parker and Chef Art. For a printable version of this recipe, as well as loads of fishing articles, videos, gear and boat reviews, and lots more, be sure to check out the fishing section on NewEnglandBoating.com. And don't forget to order your copy of New England Fishing Magazine, a big, bold, glossy publication packed with articles that'll help you catch more and bigger fish all year long. Until next time, I'm Tom Richardson for New England Fishing. Thanks for watching.